In this video, we're going to simply get an overview of periodic functions and then even and odd functions and their properties. So the first thing is a periodic function and a function is essentially periodic if you can add some constant P and all of the values continue over and over again. So what I mean by that is if I take a look at sine, this is sine of theta. Sine of theta has a period of two pi, which means if you'll notice here at negative pi, I have a value at zero, and then it goes down from there and then back up. And then two pi later, so if I add pi, I get to zero, and then if I add pi again, I get to um, pi. And so in two pi, notice I'm at zero and it will go down again and then go back up and so forth. And so sine has a period of 2 pi. Cosine also has a period of 2 pi. It's a little bit different than the other. At negative pi, I'm down here at negative 1, and then it goes up and then back down. But 2 pi later, which here is at positive pi, I'm here at negative 1 again, and then it's going to continue. And so essentially, it's just saying the pattern will restart in 2 pi, a distance of 2 pi. Same thing for, this is cosecant, oops, CSC, and this is secant, and we can see that the period of these is also 2 pi, so here I'm looking at a little bit different situation, but I've got this distance is 2 pi, and I'm saying within that I've got one on the bottom, and then one on the top, concave up, and now I've got concave down, and then it would continue concave up and so forth, and same thing for secant. Um, and again, that period is two pi, and that's just F in this. It's simply just called F because it's uh, that's the period. And then if we look at tangent and cotangent, they have a period of pi, which simply means that it starts over just a little bit more quickly. So here, from negative two pi, I'm sorry, from negative pi over two to positive pi over two, has a distance of pi, and then I can see that this pattern would continue again over and over. So this is tangent, and this is cotangent, and it's the exact same thing uh, with the same period, but as you can see, the asymptotes are in a different place. So this is at zero, and this is at negative pi, but again, this distance is pi. It's also good to know what an even or an odd function is and what that means. So you won't see this come up quite as much as the period of a function, but it is good to know and understand what it means. So if a function is even, that means f of x is equal to f of negative x, which the easy way to determine this is can I fold it in half along the x-axis? And if I can, it's an even function. A function is odd, if negative f of x is equal to f of negative x. And again, the easy way to look at that is, is it symmetric about the origin? So here's the origin. Can I take this part of the function and rotate it around the origin? So that's what we're talking about when I say about the origin. That means I'm rotating it about the origin. Would that make sense? Yes, it would. Here's the origin in this picture. Could I rotate this around? Yes. Here's the origin in this picture. Could I rotate this around? Yes. Could I rotate this around? Yes. So you get the idea. We're talking about symmetries either about the y-axis or about the origin. So sine, I'm sorry, cosine and secant are even functions, and all of the rest are odd functions. Let's take a look at just a couple of practice questions, and these are pretty straightforward, so we're just going to do three of these together. Um, what this is asking us to do is what we know about period. Now remember, the period of cosine is 2 pi, the period of tangent is pi, the period of sine is 2 pi. And so essentially what this is saying is you can find cosine of negative 7 pi over 4, which if you think about negative 7 pi over 4, it comes all the way around over here. Essentially what it's saying is it's the same as pi over 4. So all it's saying I can do is say let's add 2 pi to this and 2 pi added 
to negative 7 pi over 4 would be like adding 8 pi over 4 because that's the same as 2 pi which means it's the same as taking the cosine of pi over 4. Now we can see that by just drawing the picture but again that's just the mathematical way to do it and so remember cosine is the x value so it's radical 2 over 2. Now tangent has a period of pi and the reason it has a period of pi is because we're going to be taking sine divided by cosine so notice a positive divided by a positive here would give me a positive and a negative divided by a negative here would give me a positive and that's why the period is pi and not 2 pi because we're dividing those negatives and positives so if I have the tangent of negative pi over 2 again it's saying okay you can either say well negative pi over 2 is to here or I can add pi so 2 pi over 2 and that's going to give me tangent of 1 pi over 2 and you might be saying hold on that's different okay yes it is but what do I know about tangent either up here of pi over 2 or down here of negative pi over 2 either way remember tangent is sine over cosine which means it's really the y value over the x value so this would be 1 over 0 and this would be negative 1 over 0 which is still undefined either way and for the last one again I'm looking at 17 pi over 6 and really what this is saying is you can just take 2 pi away from that so here I added because it was negative down here I'm going to subtract 2 pi so I'm going to subtract 12 pi over 6 and again it just makes it more manageable so 17 pi minus 12 pi is sine of 5 pi over 6 and then again that makes it just a little bit easier to use our unit circle and remember sine is the y value and so my solution is one half up next, we're going to take a look at the trig functions of acute angles.